Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Mia Schultz from the University of Helsinki. And um, I'm going to be talking about um, where I am right now in, in, in trying to think uh, how, to, how to think about studying marine scientists. Uh, so the content of my talk is slightly different from, from, uh, from the title that I originally shared. Yeah, we just... Mm -hmm. Or here? Or? Um, I've been working with um, fishers and, and um, people working on icebreakers uh, and both of them deal with uncertainties and unknowns uh, t that take place in, in the marine environment. And I've very recently become interested in, in marine scientists and their ways of working with uh, uncertainty, which is, which is a bit different. But anyway, everything um, I'm just giving you background about, uh, about where I'm coming from uh, to the study of, of uncertainties um, in marine environments. Um, so, um, <clears throat> what I'm interested in uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to be talking about. Um, uh, marine ge uh, geophysicists uh, and oceanographers, or they are the people that I'm going to, going to be studying. And um, mm, I'm coming from uh, uh, I'm coming to this uh, from thinking about or, or from the approach um, that looks at what ha what takes place in marine environments and how we uh, know about marine environments uh, as as something that is shaped through the material characteristics of the sea itself and the different uh, historically, politically and materially shaped ways of knowing the sea. Uh, but then also the idea of the Anthropocene uh, as, as a big problem that we all have to share a narrative about and then how that shapes science and politics. So. Um, so I've been uh, I've been um, studying uh, or beginning a study about marine scientists and their ways of uh, dealing with scientific uncertainty uh, as a kind of window onto what is taking place in science and politics in the in the times of the Anthropocene at, at this moment. So. Um, um, <clears throat> And and what what interests me, generally speaking, in this is is that um, is is what is taking place in the sciences, uh, generally speaking, not only in the marine sciences, but but more generally in the sciences in the Anthropocene. How how attention to climate change uh, shapes what gets studied and what doesn't get studied, uh, what issues and what types of knowledge get valued over others in science. Um, also, how because of, of the idea of climate change and what climate change is going to um, cause in our lives, how that uh, shapes conceptualizations of time, and then also how scientists think about time uh, in the time of, of the Anthropocene, the climate change, and that, how that figures in the, in the knowledge production processes of scientists. And I've been uh, particularly um, intrigued uh, to examine those moments where scientists, in my case marine scientists, uh, need to pause in front of unknowns because studying the marine environment uh, uh, is, is about constantly dealing with unknowns and unanswered questions because, because we have limited capacity to to study uh, what happens under sea. So, so what pl takes place in those moments where scientists need to pause in front of unknowns, and what takes place before before they're able to to theorize, to put a theory uh, to to explain something. So, how they relate to unknowns. 
And, and, and I'm interested in, in looking at those issues uh, not only as revealing something general about science or the sciences, but something about the multiplicity of, of or the diversity of sciences. So, so getting um, getting somehow beyond um, perhaps very common ways of talking about what science is. And this is uh, and and I don't know I don't know yet. That's <laughs> We're at the beginning. Um, I've so far carried out a few interviews with marine geophysicists and oceanographers who work with deep sea geological structures, tsunamis, and the role of ocean in climate. So, the two the two latter ones have uh, have directly to do with climate change, while the first one doesn't, and. Um, and I'm interested in, in, in all of these uh, uh, because, um, because one of the issues that, that um, caught my attention is that climate change, or the study of climate change among marine scientists, uh, produces data that is available for other scientists too. So, so studying climate change and, and as a priority, that also shapes how other things get studied and then don't get studied. But but the relation between what is considered urgent and what is considered um, not so urgent, but perhaps important, and basic, more basic science that nobody knows the, the direct relevance or use of, uh, is what, what interests me. And, um, and I would like to share with you some ideas uh, about approaching these issues uh, in the anthropologies of science and in political ontology. Um, and then, and then uh, propose something, something in between, or something that, propose, uh, that combi combines uh, some, of, some of these different aspects. So, um, anthropologies of science, uh, Haraway and Latour, uh, they both work with, with scientists, as, as you probably know. Um, uh, Haraway proposes that, um, well, first of all, these, both of these persons or people, they, they approach the study of sciences primarily through, through the, the urgency of climate change. So, so we need to do, act now, we need to do something because, because uh, because we are living in the time of, uh, or we are living in the Anthropocene. So what Haraway proposes is that we notice and cultivate interspecies entanglements, we make kin and not babies, and Latour proposes to compose the common world through due process. And what these two scientists, or, or these two anthropologists share is that, is that we need to get beyond the nature-culture divide in, in, in the ways that we think about politics. Uh, however, as Mario Blaser, who's, who's an anthropologist too, but not of science, uh, says that somehow the study of scientists, regardless of this approach, remains within the modern paradigm. So, so, um, so it does not break the, the, the colonial uh, uh, um, established, the, the colonial background of, of, of modern science, and it doesn't really fully go, go beyond the, the, the division, nature, culture. Uh, and his example is that what exists is, is what exists according to science. Then Helm Reich, uh, who's also an anthropologist of science, he, he studies um, marine scientists and other scientists he proposes uh, to, to approach um, the study of undersea phenomena and uncertainties by using sounding. And he, the, this approach uh, highlights the, the uncertainties and, and, uh, or, or, or makes visible the uncertainties uh, involved in studying the marine scientists, but then also in, in studying phenomena whose limits are not 
not clear whose limits are shifting. For example, uh, life and, and sound phenomena that we used to understand in, in a specific way, but, but that are shifting. Uh, so he's he's uh, he's looking at the, how the boundaries between bioecological and sensory objects, like light, for example, are are reaching or being reached, like Haraway looks at uh, how boundaries between animal, machine, and human are being reached. Um, but regard, regardless of this, somehow a handwrite also uh, uh, stays within 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 the boundaries uh, shaped by modern science, and, and, and or or maybe perhaps better said that he he treats science as a single discourse and does not look into the possible cracks or multiplicities within the sciences or, or the marine sciences themselves, and that's what what interests me. So, so what I'm thinking about is is whether um, using or combining these these approaches within uh, anthropologies of science with something uh, quite uh, different uh, within anthropology, uh, but coming from uh, decolonial approaches to to environmental uh, politics, whether that could work or somehow bring out. Um, something that, that these other approaches do not bring out. And, and by saying this, I do not mean that we should, um, that we should necessarily look at science as, as not being able to deal with something that's metaphysical or something that um, we cannot see, but somehow um, making, uh, making, making it visible uh, that science is not one single uh, thing, and, and also treating knowledge as, as in a different, slightly different way than in the anthropology of sciences. So, so these uh, De La Cadena and Blaser, who come from Latin America, uh, they approach uh, environmental politics by highlighting uh, uh, that nobody has the epistemological right and power to decide what is and what is not. Um, so what exists in not, is not established through the sciences. Um, so while, while they're not uh, approaching scientists uh, per se, uh, perhaps something in their approaches, in their ways of, of, of thinking about uh, different uh, people or human and non-human actors is creating multiple worldings, creating uh, multiplicity, maybe that could work as a way to somehow open up the open up the approaches within the within the anthropologies of science for for looking at scientists also creating multiple worlds. So those moments where scientists are don't know, don't yet know what is going on, don't yet know. Um, what they're dealing with. They don't know that something interested, interesting is perhaps happening, um, but they don't have a name or a theory for that. Um, these are issues that are difficult to talk about, and they, they remain invisible because, because uh, it's difficult to find questions for them, but it's also uh, not, maybe not very easy for scientists to talk about them. So, so perhaps, um, Perhaps looking at looking at these thing, uh, issues from these perspectives might might uh, be fruitful. <coughs> okay, so just bringing bringing these things together, I'm not um, at this moment, unfortunately, not able to to give uh, insights into the data that I have yet because it's it's so little. I'm, I'm going to go and and do interviews at the Scripps Institute of Oceanography next year. But anyway, as I said. So attention to these multiple worlds, potentially multiple world, worlds, of shifting uncertain boundaries in the marine sciences because they are they are shifting and there's a lot going on in, in both within marine sciences, uh, generally speaking, but also within marine sciences on climate change 
that might reveal both the politics of science, but also alternatives that are also taking place within scientific knowledge production. So in a, in a way, it's something similar uh, to, to how Gibson Grant uh, approaches uh, capitalisms as multiple and not just one single. So this is, this is what I wanted to share with you today. Mm -hmm.